like I like the Motown stuff. I mean, that's kind of like soul and stuff, and that's what I least grew up listening to Stevie and and uh, you know the Jackson, Donnie and stuff. But I mean, basically, uh, you know, and then when I got a little older and stuff, as I grew up, I always still listen to that stuff. But I listened to um, I started listening like Donnell Jones and R. Kelly and you know the late '90s and stuff, and you know really started getting into. I mean, I just basically felt it. I mean, I love. A big pop fan too. I love Michael Jackson and Prince. And, I mean, I just—it's just basically in my blood. I really never got—I never liked rock music. Really, that's just the point thing. I just didn't feel it. It made me—it um, made me get those goosebumps. Well, basically, I mean, when I was like <laughs> right after high school, I got into this—I uh, got into the singing group, right? Um, mm -hmm. You want to call it boy group, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I hate that name, but man, it's like when you got the group just sounds corny. The name just sounds corny. Like they say that boy band shit, but it's like it's a group. You know what I mean? Whatever. And we went over. I was signed with BMG first, and we went to Europe and like sold a bunch of records. And then um, I went solo and sold a bunch of records and came over to America because I was like, yo, I was working with all these like um, deep producers in Europe and stuff, and all yeah, they were great. But I was like, I want to have. You know, I want to work with, I'll team Pharrell Williams, who I love, and, you know, Timbo. You know, I want to have the beats, and I want to have the tracks that are, like, that, you know, what are setting the trend for the, the whole world, and not just, like, following stuff. So, you know, it's kind of like a factory over there, and I kind of left there, and I was like, I'm going to come here to the States and try to make it with one shot, you know, see if I can actually do this. And I came over here, it took me, I spent all my money I made over there in, like, a year and a half. And I was, like, right ready to be, like, man, I got to go do something else, I guess, or something. And uh, it was, like, a year and a half, and I got it at the end of the summer. I was, like, by the end of the summer, I got to get a deal. Uh, by the last day of summer, I got my deal. It's crazy. Cool. Well, that's what, and then when I met, the reason I got signed is I met um, Divine Stevens. So I don't know if you know, but he, uh, that's who signed Akon to his label up front. And, um, Devon used to be a big choreographer and stuff, and then he became, you know, he used to choreograph Usher and TLC and, you know, artist development. He's big on that, and he's Atlanta-based. And then he signed his first artist to uh, Universal SRC, and up front, it was his own label called, a and his name's Akon. Of course, we all know who that is. I'm going to say his name is Akon, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's kind of very big in the R&B world as far as producer, everything, artist. And, um, yeah, so, so it's like, uh... Sorry, and um, he, you know, and, and then he, you know, he met me at three. It was three in the morning, and he met my manager. His manager came into Jerry's Deli. It's kind of a funny story, and uh, and uh, he came in with some chicks, and Divine was in there with Akon. They were doing a session in L.A., and he's like, "Yo, I got this artist." And Divine's like, "Oh man, whatever," because everyone always says that. And um, yeah, he took me in, and uh, now he took took the he took my he took him out to the car, and listened to my stuff. And, like, within 10 minutes, I mean, 10 seconds, he was like, yo, I love this kid. And he's like, all right. He called, he came back to Atlanta the next day, and he brought him to this, uh, his, his like, uh, finance partner, Terry Johnson, who owns 1720, called me that day and said, we're signing you. And, like, they flew me out to Atlanta in a week, within a week, and signed me, and I've been here ever since. So it's crazy. They moved me from L.A. I mean, it was, it's a small town, but it's not like that. It's not like a, it's not like real small. It's like, um, I mean, it's probably like, I mean, shit, there's probably like 150,000, 200,000 or something in there, but I mean, it's not, it's not that small, but it's definitely not like a Philly or anything, you know, a major city, but it was good growing up in it. It's kind of a very tough town. It's like, people are miserable, man, in that town. I swear to God, I don't know why, but everyone's so, like, you have to either be like, you have to play football or wrestle or like box. It's like all like, testosterone driven everyone still got fades everyone still has like new york yankees hairstyle like the like the fade yeah they still have like shorts so like i have like my hair grown out kind of funky and sitting like i go back there and like dress you can't dress differently you gotta wear like like still like late 90s stuff you know what i mean like you gotta wear real baggy pants and like shit everything's all like real believe it or not like hard and it's like they stand in the clubs with the arms crossed you walk by and like someone was waiting for you just bump them like push and be like, yo, you bum me. You know what I mean? People just do it all the time. It's just, that's how I grew up. And I used to be like that for a while, like all corny like that. We're trying to like, it's like once I moved out of there, I, was, I go back there. I was like, man, it's really a tough town. And I guess it helped shape who I was. I stick up for myself. But 
it's not really a cool place. You know, if you're living in big cities where people are just more chill and you can be yourself, it's like a lot better. Yeah, I mean, I'm working on the album and stuff, and I'm getting to work with, like, Jazzy Faye, uh, uh, Akon, Dallas, who I'm good, became good friends with down here in Atlanta, and, like, it's going really good. And then my boy, Davey Deleuze, who did uh, my first single night showing on so. Yeah, it's going really good. I'm grinding in the studio and stuff, and I'm writing a lot of stuff on my guitar and then taking it into the studio. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've been playing since I was, like, 10. So I've been playing, and, yeah, so it's like, I, I, and I have a mini studio at my place, so I, like, do pre-production there, and I take it in and let the big dogs do it. <laughs> exactly, but at least, at least I can get all my ideas down. I can, like, write the whole song, you know, I can write the structure of it. And then, I mean, that's, that's like, if I'm doing those, then I also do collabos when I go in. Like, when I'm working with Akon and stuff, I go in there, and I just sit and I take notes. You know, I write, I'll write, like, I'll throw out ideas and do half the song, come in with my guitar, get chords or some chords or something, and then some, like, ideas, and then I'll let him do his hook because he's, like, you can't beat him right now, you know? So it's hard to, like, not be all, like, oh, hey, I can do it all myself. It's like, when you work with, you know, talented people like that, man, it's like you got to sit back and watch it. You know, these people are very talented getting to work with. It's a pleasure. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Davey Zulu is my boy. That's who, who I'm working with on the album, too. And that's who produced that song, Night Shining. All right. Basically, it's just like, I don't know, he just made the track in like five seconds. It's like, it was crazy. <laughs> like, we're working with him a bunch of times. Usually when it's a hot track, the whole track was like done. I don't know how. He makes tracks so fast. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff, but he's kind of like up and coming still. You know, he's done Jennifer Lopez. He's done Tal Talia. Um, he's done Jessica Simpson and stuff like that. And uh, Jeannie Ortega. So he he's sold about 10 million records so far. You know, that's great. But, like, he's still, like, not like, he's not like, you know, it's not like, a freaking Will I Am or Akon yet, you know. But I mean, he's on his way. And this song is top. But he made it. He made it. It's just like in, in the studio. He just started coming with his beat. It's just like it's crazy. Like ten minutes, and then the song. Basically, I mean, it's just like night shining armor. I mean, it's basically like what every guy wants to say to a girl. It's like you know. What I mean, it's like all these girls. You always have a girl that you know, or, or I guess for you, for for a guy on your show, to play about someone. You always like it could be night shining armor girl. A guy you could be like you know. You know, they're, they're complaining on your shoulder about this stuff, and you just want to say, listen, I can be there for you. I'll be there. Why don't you notice me? Why don't you just let me do it? And and if you didn't notice before, I'm telling you right now. So go, go. you know, his, go tell him the time is up because I'm going to be a night shining over.